It is fitting that our parliament pause for a moment to honour the remarkable life of a great Australian, Frank McGovern. Frank McGovern is the last of the survivors of HMAS Perth, and he passed away overnight. Frank joined the Naval Reservist in 1939 at just 19 years of age. He was on board the HMAS Perth in 1942 when it was attacked by the Japanese invasion convoy. Frank survived the sinking, but 357 sailors ultimately perished. Among them was Frank's brother, Vince. Frank was ordered onto a Japanese destroyer and became a prisoner of war, working on the infamous Burma Siam Railway. In 1944, the order came for prisoners to be transported to the coal mines and factories of Japan. Frank was among the over 1,000 Australian and British prisoners forced into the cramped hull of the Rikuyo Maru. In the early hours of the 12th of September 1944, the ship was hit by American torpedoes who were unaware that Allied prisoners of war were present in the hull of that ship. This is one of Australia's worst maritime disasters. 1,000. Uh, 500 uh, POWs uh, perished in the sinking, including, including 543 Australians. Frank survived that attack. Think about that. He survived two sinkings and located a lifeboat left behind by the Japanese. For three days, he and 30 other soldiers survived in this lifeboat. By the third day... With nothing, Frank and his crew were ordered at gunpoint to board a Japanese ship, becoming a prisoner of war for the second time. He endured months of work in the factories at Kawasaki Camp in Tokyo before the US commenced the deadliest air raid in history with 2,000 tonnes of incendiary bombs dropped over 16 square miles of Tokyo. Frank was moved to a new camp only to narrowly survive another bombing. This one fractured his spine. In Shibora Hospital, warned about the danger to incapacitated prisoners, Frank managed to stand and walk at pace for the Japanese guards. He told me the story about how some of his colleagues uh, would go off uh, for what was termed surgery and be drained of their blood uh, because uh, that was being used uh, for uh, the Japanese uh, soldiers who were injured. One of his colleagues and comrades uh, said to him uh, that this was what was going on so somehow with a fractured spine, he managed to stand and get out of the hospital in order to avoid <clears throat> the dreadful fate that some of his comrades uh, were dealt with. He returned to the camp and continued to work somehow because those who weren't able to work uh, were not able to survive. He was one of the first Australians who were repatriated back uh, to Sydney after the war ended uh, by our friends the United States uh, when the war ended and he arrived in Sydney on the 15th of September 1945. Uh, I had, uh, after his family uh, reached out uh, to me, uh, I had the extraordinary privilege of meeting with Frank on the 22nd of April, just before Anzac Day uh, this year, and it was covered by uh, the Daily Telegraph that day. Um, he was at that time at the Eastern Suburbs Private Hospital. He was a bit upset because Frank, at 103 years of age, uh, was still living at home by himself. And cooking for himself, he told me the secret to life 
a long life was he drank a bottle of wine every day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and he, he insisted, even though it was a reasonably early hour of the morning, that I have a beer with him. <laughs> and I did that. He was amazing. An extraordinary Australian as part of our greatest generation. Um, a man of deep modesty, gentle humour and powerful optimism. He's a Roosters fan, so he gave me complete curry about rugby league and how East were a much better team, he of course still called it East, than, uh, than South Sydney. Uh, his family uh, were around him uh, on that day and it was uh, one of the great privileges of being Prime Minister is that sometimes you get to do some things like that without TV cameras. Um, you get to just say thank you uh, to a great Australian. After all that he'd endured, and uh, when he went through uh, his story, uh, prisoner of war twice, survivor of two torpedo attacks, he said, I've been lucky in life. He told me that every Anzac day, he doesn't march anymore, he used to, but he ran out of mates. So he thinks about his family and spends it uh, with them. Mr Speaker, Frank McGovern lived to see what his service and his mate's sacrifice meant to all Australians. Uh, we salute his life today. Uh, he's gone, but like all who serve our great country in uniform, in the past and today, they will never be forgotten, lest we forget. Yeah.